So for people that maybe don't understand, like in a way, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but in a way it was almost like you were, how were you manipulated by some of these men? Let me put it that way. So um, I got into a relationship when I was really young and we became homeless and um, you know, we were both addicted to drugs and he told me, you know, if you love me, you'll do this for us. Like, and that right there is <laughs> manipulation. So when you were trafficked, in your mind, could you like somehow, like walk me through how you justified that? Obviously you're very young. I mean, how old at the time? Um, I was 18. The first time you were trafficked. How did you justify in your mind? Like, well, I'm doing this for me and my boyfriend. I'm doing, what, what went through your mind or did anything? Um, I would say that, um, well, my, my addiction, for one, had a big part in it, and um, I had some unresolved trauma as well, and that, that was the, you know, they say using is a symptom, and that's exactly what it was, is a symptom of the trauma and not wanting to face it, you know. So it was just kind of fascinated by you ended up with an infection. Mm -hmm. And that's how you ended up in the hospital. Yes. And it was just so severe that that kind of was like a part of what led you to say like, oh, this is it, right? Yeah, I mean, well, that was, well, honestly, not at first. Um, my addiction was so severe that I would leave the hospital against medical advice, mm -hmm. knowing that I have a blood infection and, and blood clots in my arm, neck, and lungs, and I just, my, like I said, my addiction was so severe, but you didn't I care. didn't care. That's just I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't care if I lived or died. Yeah. And that was a, a very horrible place to be. Mm. So I've done some stories about like recovery and stuff like that. I mean, am I, I'm very fortunate because I get to meet so many people, you know, with these, with different stories. Um, but so when you talk about hard drugs before the needle, so like at 13, were you already doing pills? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, um, when I was in ninth grade, um, uh, like it started, um, like I had, I had dabbled a little bit, mm -hmm. um, like. The first time I ever smoked weed, I was like 12. Mm -hmm. And, but it didn't like get progressive until I was 13. And um, then I was smoking every day and I actually got expelled from school in ninth grade for smoking weed on campus. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had got put into this alternative school that happened to drug test. Mm -hmm. And that's when my boyfriend introduced me to opiates pain pills um, because it only lasts in your system for a couple days so, it's so dangerous. yeah I didn't understand the extent how did you meet that guy and how, how much older was he than you he was just um, about two years older than me okay, so he was in high school yeah well he was a dropout but yeah so he was a young teenager himself mm -hmm. um, and how'd you meet him he was my best friend's cousin People out there right now need people like you to go in and help them see the light. I mean, without a doubt. Absolutely. One of my, uh, forever, one of my favorite parts of what I do with Sale of Freedom is going into the jail because I was that girl. I was that woman who, in and out of jail, in and out, in and out, and I um, facilitate a self esteem group every Thursday at the Sarasota County Jail. And I just love it because, well, sometimes I actually, like, come in contact with girls that I've known since elementary school and, like, who have known, like, I, you know, used drugs with, who've known me in the streets and known how bad my addiction was. Mm 